The 10th of Tevet is a fast day, and it marks three things. The first one is it's the date that the Babylonians started the siege of the first temple, and that culminated in the destruction of the, the temple, and the resultant exile in Babylon. The second reason is actually it's the ninth of Av, and that's the death, the day of the death of Ezra, who led the Jewish people back from Babylon. The third reason is a bit cryptic, and it's the day that the Torah was translated into Greek for King Ptolemy. Now that one's more difficult because, okay, you can see, understand the sorrows of the first two, but why should translating the Torah into Greek be considered a sad event? Now, you have people who will say that um, any translation to this, a certain extent, is a commentary, and that something is always lost in the translation. It's the uh, position of um, the Gemara in uh, Mesechta Sofrim. It also says there that the day that the Torah is translated into Greek was as uh, hard for the Jewish people as the breaking of the two tablets of the, of the Ten Commandments uh, in the building of the golden calf, the Shulchan Aruch condemns the day as uh, that when it happened, three days of darkness came out and, and filled the world. Okay? The story of the translation is, um, is told in Mesechtes um, Megillah, and it's part of a wider uh, discussion about translating Sifre Kodesh. And uh, you have a machlokas there with some say they can be translated into all, uh, all languages. That's the, uh, the Mishnah itself, the, the Tanakhama. The second one is Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel, who says really it can only be translated into Greek. Uh, the basic idea is that the Greek language is the only foreign language that, the, that it's fitting that the Torah should be translated into. You also have other translations of the Torah that are widely used in the base Midrash, uh, specifically the Targum Onkelis, and the Targum Yonasam. In addition to that, you have uh, Rashi on um, where he's talking about um, Moshe in the beginning of Sefer Devarim, that he explained the Torah, and Rashi said he explained it in 70 languages. You also have the Mishnah uh, that explains uh, the erection of the stones in Eretz Israel immediately after uh, Yoshua crossed the Jordan, or shortly after it, where it says that the Torah was written on them in the 70 languages of the day. So you have ample examples of translations um, for various purposes that are considered perfectly acceptable. The difficulty with the um, translation into Greek, it, it originally was reckoned actually as a miracle in that Ptolemy uh, requested uh, 70 or 72 uh, wise men from Israel and he put them into rooms and he said, all of you write, a, a, translate the Sefer Torah in, into Greek and they all they all translated in the same way, and even more miraculous, they all made certain changes that were of things that would be confused and in, in order to basically preserve the fundamental 
message of the Torah. They all made the same changes. And this was considered a miracle as well. It was considered a good thing. It would seem that what happened, though, was a sad thing as a result of that, because what happened with that Sefer Torah, it's called the Septuagint in Latin, after 70, is it basically uh, the Romans translated it into Latin, and then the uh, church translated it into English and basically all other languages as well. And what happened is that the, say, the, the translation of the Torah in the hands of the Europeans was considered the true Torah, and the Torah in Lashon HaKodesh, the, the sacred language, Hebrew, was, kind, was not really considered the true Torah. And what happened in addition to that is that the Europeans began to claim that the mission of being a nation of priests was lost by the Jews because of their many sins and had been given over to the Europeans. And part of the proof was that the, if you wanted to learn the, the, the Bible, the, the Tanakh, they had translated really all into Greek and all into all languages. You had to learn it from them. To a certain extent, the, um, the editions of the Tanakh and the Chumash remained a closed book for really most people and certainly um, the overwhelming majority of non-Jews. Okay. Now, it did create a certain number of difficulties because basically if someone is going to um, be a nation of priests according to the, the Torah, uh, it's a uh, basically a totalitarian doctrine. Uh, the, the Chumash will tell you that every uh, detailed laws on the way you're supposed to conduct your, your life, including uh, how you're to think and what you're supposed to believe and how you're supposed to feel, and even mundane de details, which shoe to put on first, which shoe to tie first. Um, it's a totalitarian doctrine which the Jews take pride in. They say, well, we want the, the God's word even in our secret parts. Uh, but for the Europeans, they say this really is a bit much. Okay. It has been rectified to a certain extent in recent years. Um, we are, um, Lashon HaKodesh has become more widely understood You've had uh, translations of the Torah into at least English that have been very, uh, very popular as, ver as well as very lucid. Uh, so as I said, the, the situation has been to a certain extent rectified, but it's, uh, the Jews have a little bit of a distance to go before they can be truly called the people of the book. Thank you.